EMS lab, and this is John Longest, who's the EMS program director, and he's going to tell you all about it. John, thank you for having me again. I'm overwhelmed by the facility now. What in the world do I have facing me here? Well, uh, in our EMS lab, one of the really good things we have is an EMS, or excuse me, an ambulance simulator. So and that's actually makeup or a mock-up, right, of yeah. the ambulance, which you'd be put into if there's an emergency. Yes, sir. This is actually the dimensions and the layout inside are very realistic, and there's a company that, that designs these and installs them inside educational facilities. And this is going to allow us to have the students in a scenario situation transition from where they began treating the patient, and we can show you where we that later, into the ambulance, continue treatment assessment in the ambulance. It's a different dynamic in there, as you can see the in the video. The environment is smaller. Smaller, yeah. yep. And uh, continue treat within the ambulance, and then uh, they can also transition the ambulance or the patient into our simulated ER, which is behind us. So it gives us a, a it provides a lot of realism to our scenarios. It, it makes the students think: When do I need to initiate transport? What what assessment and treatment do I do inside of someone's house? before I transport, how much I do in the ambulance, and then transition to the ER. So it gives the full picture. It's a very realistic training scenario. And I talked about initiating scenarios. We can initiate scenarios from our apartment complex, which we'll see later, or we can initiate a scenario from our indoor car simulator. So this uh, looks a little bit like a smart car, but it actually the dimensions of the working space are very real. So we have windshields, and we have A and B codes. We have, it's like a little Prius. It's I'm, like a I little Prius. Prius right? We have uh, mock uh, gas pedals and brake pedals that the student can get, uh, the patient, I should say, gets caught on. We have seat belts. So it allows our students to safely, learn to safely access, uh, assess, and start treatment and extricate from a vehicle. So we aren't simulating. What was usually done in the past is you would sit a folding chair in a classroom. Which and is not anything like getting it's not somebody out of a car. It's not close enough. Our goal is to make simulation as real as possible. We want the students to feel like they're in the real situation. Well, and here, I'm just, I mean, right here sure. you have to worry about hitting the head, getting sure. the legs free, and it all gives you, and you've got seat belt concerns. And we have well. extra seat belts, so if the, if the patient is trapped, we can actually have the students cut the seat belt. <laughs> okay. And this, this simulator, um, he's not as dynamic as the ones that you saw, that we have, that you also saw in right. nursing, but he still has blood pressure pulses, he still breathes and talks, sure. so he will give the student feedback as far as you know, how severely injured they are, so we can move them. Get vital signs, or get used to reaching in and getting a pulse, et cetera, yes. et cetera. Yes, so it's, it's very little that is fake or, or not real in these type of situations. Okay. Now, John, we're going to head in the back room. We have an apartment complex to look at. Is yes, that sir. correct? Yes. Okay, that's yeah. good. We'll take off right now.